some of you heard of me speak of when I do blending, I talk about point to point blending. I went ahead and uh, meshed this section. I'll let you see it real quick. I showed it in the last video and I'll uh, take this off showing you the pixelation on the image and not crisp these details on my vector and I will click on it let you know that it is the gradient mesh uh, showed you a couple videos back uh, how I just showed you the process of me doing that side and I did the eyeball the iris on the actual same layer as the eye and like I said I'm not doing a detailed mesh but I'm doing the face I'm gonna give the face some attention but when you hear me speak of point-to-point -point blending it refers to like this section here and the section I created on a new layer for the other eye uh, I overlap them. I overlap them and you'll see when I put it in outline mode this one overlaps over this one they go point for point point for point so this overlap is going to allow these two colors from this mesh to this mesh here to blend into each other at the intersecting point which is this line it's not uh, right on but it's close enough to get the effect of these two blending between each other and I'm going to go ahead and mesh these three sections here to show you that they will blend together pretty nicely. I'm going to lock, lock this right eye layer since it's already done. It's not completed. I just went ahead and meshed it and I'm going to brush in some eyelashes and just to give an extra, extra bit of detail. But let me go ahead and start meshing get my get ready to do my shortcut and it might go a little slow I need to get some new RAM for my computer I can upgrade to 16 but right now I'm working on 4 so this has got a basic model Apple charges $200 to to add RAM on your computer when I can buy the same amount and install it myself for 80 but I haven't done it yet been kinda of busy uh, actually ordered it and it's on the way but I really never needed it until I started messing around with these detailed or semi detailed in my detail mesh so I really need that extra punch for my computer but we're gonna get it going with what we got now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because these lines are are uh, fairly close to each other right now I'm zoomed in at 1600% and like I said earlier in another video this image is not the best quality like I showed you this pixelation and the pixelation I mean it's a lot of that going on so it's, this is not what I typically work with but uh, the DeviantArt user she allows she gave me permission to use whatever photos I want so in this particular photo didn't have a lot of uh it wasn't high enough resolution i think it's uh 1600 by 1200 or something i normally work with images that have resolution 3500 by 5000 or something like that because that gives you lots of detail even if i zoom in at six thousand percent so i'm going kind of slow because like i said my computer needs a little ram and recording a video while i'm working on illustrator does take a little from my computer power so bear with me on that but when i'm not recording is which i is the reason why i don't record a lot while i'm uh using illustrator I mean, when I'm not recording, I can zoom through this. But I have to click, stop, wait, and it's very tedious and annoying. Especially when you have to get in a rhythm to do this. And it's a little harder with my situation right now. So I'm just clicking. And I got a little off here. But I manually put the lines in. It is a way to not manually do it.
but I, on the left side of this section I'm working on it had a had a couple of curves on it here I didn't want to go through and manually fix every mesh line so I just decided to go ahead and and put them in by hand so I basically went from this just click 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 like that all the way until I had all my horizontal lines and I put the vertical lines in where I where I saw fit so this is how the point to point blending works out because where I have uh, color already on this mesh side to the right <clears throat> I'm putting points at the same spot so it will be the same color at this area on this new mesh so they would come out together equally the same and it creates a nice uh, nice transition between the two mesh hopefully I can at least get one more row done before I stop this video and you guys are still here paying attention because <laughs> this this is pretty boring boring to watch me click a dot so that's why I try to talk and give you a little commentary but unlike my past videos I've been recording then uh, recording my audio separately I'm doing them together here so if I talk slow or if I'm dragging, that means I'm thinking and doing other things. So bear with me with that also. I'm going to try to spice up my videos a little bit. Try to add a little humor in there. Show my personality more. Because at home I'm more of a jokester. But on these videos, when I watch them myself, I put myself to sleep. So that's not good if I'm boring myself I know what I'm doing to you guys but I'm glad you guys giving me feedback and um, responding and commenting on my videos I mean it's very helpful and I'm glad that these videos are helping somebody because like I said when I first started nobody helped me I was on DeviantArt I, I joined DeviantArt to get help from uh, people on there that was already doing gradient mesh work and I wrote 20 30 people I won't call out names or anything that's not my style but nobody responded so I had to buckle down and figure all this out on my own and I'm trying to give you guys a blueprint now blueprint mean it helps you build the house but you still gonna have to do some on your part the thinking and making decisions or where to put your mesh lines and you're gonna have to still make decisions so I'm not giving you everything but I'm giving you enough to get you started and you want to struggle like I did when I first tackled the mesh tool <clears throat> so about almost close to being halfway done and I'm going to show you guys uh, how these two points will intersect and how you'll see that smooth transition. Hopefully. I mean, if everything goes as planned. But generally, stuff don't go as planned, so we'll figure it out. It's a lot of thinking using the gradient mesh tool. I mean, I, I explained it to somebody as it's like a, a math equation and you have to solve it you have to figure it out every every mess you do they're all different so I mean somebody might you know create something like a frog or an animal I don't normally work with animals so because they have different structure body structures so I have to do I have to figure out how I'm gonna place certain pieces but with a human body I work with so many human body vectors that I mean it's not easy but it's, it's easier than like animals which I have not worked with a lot of and as you know the, the, uh, the biology of an animal and the biology of a human is different so there's a lot of a lot of different things you have to do a lot of different decisions you have to make and a lot of different blending and hiding and using your layers correctly to cover up certain things that you don't want the, uh, your audience to see but 
The whole point is to make it look good. I mean, mistakes will be made. I still make mine, but a lot of people tend not to see them, which is great for business. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So I did these two. I blended them. Oh, I missed one. I missed two, actually. But that's fine. Just go correct them. And, and I think it was this one. So just click it. And let's see what we got. So I went ahead and did these two. As you see, I got a slight little something going on here. But to fix it, I just click on that already messed side. And it'll just take the color from there. So, I mean, this will help with the transition. So it doesn't always work out perfectly, but uh, you can you can figure out what you need to do to make it better. Actually, that came out a little worse. And since I did overlap it here, I can also use my transparency tool on this section and I can put it down to like 20 right there because there is something below it that's already meshed and let's take a look at it helped out a little bit I can do that also with this one or I could just since this whole section is overlap I could take my lasso tool and take all of these on the edge they're gonna select them and I can change my opacity let's go to down about 10 let's see how that works out so like I said I mean just me learning about this opacity and using that edge that's why I always overlap one row and you see the difference it took off that hard line that was here so I'll uh, undo it and you can see it that hard line and I will redo it and it's gone so just different tricks man just point for point blending and bringing these sections together and I'll zoom out and you'll see that when I zoom down this is 300 percent so that uh, uh, pixelation that the image provided and me zoomed in to 1600% it, it looked like my vector was pixelated but now that I'm at 300% you see that the details are starting to be there and I get down to 100 150% it looks like the image so I can get up to about about here is when you can clearly start seeing some of the pixelation and right now this is 400 percent so i'm gonna go ahead and mesh this whole other section i might make another video while doing it or i might just show you guys a different section of the face but right now i'm gonna end this and that's point for point blending right there blending these two sections together and i'm gonna go on ahead and finish this up cut this video off because it's slowing me up a lot I just wanted to make a couple videos since I've been gone away for a couple weeks trying to make it up to you guys so if you need some help hit me up in the comment section or leave me a private message and until next time like always fellas and ladies peace keep working keep practicing peace